another load for Auschwitz. Actually, I'm at the uh, Rolock Steam Pressures Reunion, and they have a train that circles the whole ground, and it is kind of a cool thing. I wrote it one time, because it gets you a good layout, you know, view of the whole place, because it's a confusing tangle of tractors and stuff. But it was kind of fun the one time when I got on, there wasn't many people here, and a couple of whole bowie looking guys got on with banjos and started playing. Kind of fun. We don't see those anymore. Okay, I did a video a while back on my brother's little Russell, that horrible. This is the tractor that he has. And he's down here in a slug of tractors. But he's just getting it fired up, ready for the parade. So I'll show it again when the parade starts. But you can see, this is considerably larger, and this is, you know, a pulling machine. <laughs> but it's a brute, and this thing, when he got it, it was he hauled it up from Texas, and believe me, it was nothing but scrap iron. Uh, that's completely rebuilt, but uh, it was amazing. The, as poor a condition it, as it was in, and now it runs perfectly. Now, I was surprised we here to come down here and find this little gas station because this is from like 10 miles away from me. In fact, that cat standing under the flag was that his brother ran the gas station and he was my mailman. But it's just funny, it disappeared from home and I thought, well, they tore it down, but nope, they moved it down here. So I used to buy gas there and I used to use this air compressor regularly for blowing out the radiator on the road grader. When he moved out, I had to buy a new air compressor. But it's a neat old gas station, you know, and there, there used to actually be a couple of them. Uh, there was one in a neighboring town, too, that same design. Bailing straw with a horse. You know, the horse walks in a circle to burn that shaft that runs the baler. Not particularly fast, but we make a convenient bail. But they had been thrashing, that's where the straw came from. They had two horses hooked on the other turnstile over there that was running some kind of a converter to run a flat belt to run that thrasher. It's interesting, I've seen that same kind of a rig used for uh, running saws even. You know, interesting, but no, it takes, what, you got a half dozen guys running that thing. <laughs> so it should maybe not too efficient. Okay, as long as I'm here, I, I always look at different methods of building. But you'll notice here, you can see the floor joists very prominently cut in. But there's a thing about these corners, the way these are notched. Uh, it's intricate, but you run into a problem. They can actually run water back and the water will sit and rot in them corners. You know, you see that quite often. This poor devil, what she needs is a good coat of pine tar. You can see it particularly like here where you have this junction where the new addition part has been added on. The water from the roof runs down onto the wall. It's not bad, but, but she is screaming for pine tar. But here you can see the way these are cut in, and then there's a hole where it was pinned. Because some of these have been replaced. You know, it was common to replace cell logs. Uh, I might end up showing you later this fall, they want to move an old one by me, and I think I'm going to have to help them cut some cell logs to replace those. But that's older than this is. They do a nice job on the corners, but it's always that 
that slant here. You know, in theory, they cut this this way. It's supposed to drain out, but you know, they stay wet back there. But that's why, you know, this roof is too new. Uh, they should have more overhang. You know, the more overhang you got, the more protected the walls are. But here again, you can see where the floor joists come through. It's an interesting building, but yeah, and there's some wall joists coming through for the, you know, they did a little modifying to it. But a lot of these things ain't going to last much longer. Well, that's quite the engine, but it looks like it's running on propane. And to get it to start, they've got a tractor engine with a a wheel that they must push against that wheel. <laughs> well, that's the setup. That is a big machine though. I grew up around tractors, but one time when I was a little kid, we went to one of these out by Foreman where my mom grew up. And I tell you, one of these things was coming across the field and it absolutely terrified me. You know, it just, it's not that they're fast, it's just that they're huge and they appear to be completely unstoppable. You know, it's just frightening. They don't go fast, but for a little kid, that is one terrifying piece of machinery. That is my brother's tractor there going in the parade now. Call a slow parade. <laughs> they always pack a bunch of people on them things. Especially little kids like this one. Oh, I see they got a little kid on the back. Doing the princess wave. That's a lot of scrap iron. The one guy was giving my brother crap about not having a roof on his. He said, real men don't need canopies. 
And that is another Russell. And I guess it's just a little bit bigger than the one my brother has, you know, horsepower wise. So some of these machines, you look at them and you think they look almost like a, a hand-built, you know, one-off machine, like that one. Some of them are pretty exotic. No, that isn't steam, you know, that's running oil or like a kerosene. Uh, some of them you gotta start them on gas and then switch them to kerosene. kids played in a straw pile after the threshing. Like little pigs.